You know, Dr. Paul, uh, I wanted to mention the shortages because we saw over this last week uh, with the gasoline, once again in America, lines at the gasoline station. And, uh, you know, I want for our listeners to always, when you hear or see of shortages, the first question that should come to your mind is, at what price? You know, at $2 a gallon, yeah, there's going to be shortages uh, because there's a crisis. You're not going to pay pre-crisis prices during a crisis. So what gas stations should have done, but are too scared to do, is they should raise the price of a gallon of gas to $5, $7, $10, and that'll get rid of the shortages. You'll be able to get gas. It'll just be very expensive. But there's no way they're going to do that because they know people want regular prices. And they'll go run to their uh, congressman who will come up with some kind of arbitrary price gouging. So gas uh, stations, they keep it at the regular price or slightly higher, and the supplies disappear. Now, let's think of what would have happened if they raised Mm -hmm. to $5, $7, even $10. Everywhere else in the country or even in the world, they would see those prices and think, you know, uh, we could get our supplies over there. They're they're selling at $7 a gallon. We'll still make some money. And the supplies would rush in. But if you keep prices down at the $2 pre-crisis levels, no one are going to even attempt to get their supplies in, uh, you know, to satisfy the market demand. So, uh, you know, they're not going to lose money moving their supplies. So that's what happens. You end up with shortages, lines, people punching each other in the face. And it's all because you don't let the market do what the market is supposed to do. You know, one excuse that they use is when there's a crisis, when we go to war, or there's a a recession or something, or COVID, that's an emergency, and therefore they they have to do something real fast. We have to have government guidance. You know, if there's an epidemic, only government knows what to do with epidemic and sort out all all the details of who should do what and how many treatments should be available and who's going to pay for it. So in the, in the midst of a crisis, whether it's a war, I thought about it because I do remember rationing during World War II, and it made things uh, much worse. But uh, they, they advocate that. But the opposite should be true. When there's an emergency, if there is a hurricane, you don't want you you don't want more price controls. You want more freedom for prices to go up and adjust and get people incentive to go beyond the call of duty and work all night to provide some of these services. So they do it exactly the opposite of what they're uh, supposed to do. And, you know, I think about COVID. COVID now, they're. There's justification to blame the reaction to COVID as part of our economic problem because of all that lockdown. That was, you know, to uh, diminish the, uh, uh, you know, productivity. And when you think about the, uh, the subsidies, uh, the uh, very, uh, very extravagant subsidies to the people that lost their jobs because of government action, they uh, started passing out a lot of money. So if you're going to subsidize people not working, which was caused by the government, guess what? You're going to get a lot more of it. And uh, not only do you get a lot more of it, and there are millions of people out there on the dole, they also say, well, as long as it's coming, why well, do go back to a job? And in the midst of all this mess, the government is able to create a situation where people have money, jobs are being offered to them, and they won't even take them. I would say that's a pretty good example of mal- uh, malinvestment and, uh, and, and mess- messing things up. And uh, the, p- the people really under a recession or depression. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. Uh, there's always a chance for a job. The big problem with it is psychological, and it's really tough to achieve because prices should go down. That's why the depression was prolonged. And it, it, prices had to be up, and the, the, the wages couldn't go down. But we have pushed wages up, so that's why the inflation continues. Instead of uh, wages uh, adjusting, what what have we done? You know, I, I thought going there was a time when it was six and seven, eight dollars. They talked. And we used to kid and say, well, if eight's good. Why not 15? <laughs> we shouldn't have said it because now it's at 15. But even that isn't very steady because some of the big companies now that have benefited tremendously 
from this interventionist inflationary system. They're saying, well, we need the people to work. Uh, Amazon and Walmart, we need workers. So we're going to increase it up to $17 and a half. And it's, it's all, and then the, um, the, the prices that the people have to pay eat up those increases. So they're on a cycle and they're not about to change it. The wealthy people who understand it clearly are benefited by it and they're not about to change it. And it's also tragic that some of the really big corporations, you'll find out that they're really into the woke business. They're, they're part of wokeism and they're, which means that they're, they are partners with uh, all this cultural Marxist stuff. So that is, that is a real calamity that, uh, that we're, we're facing. And yet, in spite of it, I think uh, the cause for liberty is justified. I think there's a lot of more people joining. People are starting to get sick and tired of all this. And they, they always get sick and tired of inflation. But the classic is the people will always say, I don't have enough money. And so uh, if you want to find out what happens, just go to Venezuela and you find out what happens. People don't have enough money. But what they should be saying, I don't have enough purchasing power of my money. And there are no restraints on the government for printing the money. Then they might get somewhere. But the immediate effect for, of that is not politically popular. People, you mean you mean my check would stop or you're going to cut something? And, and I understand that. That's why it's not likely to happen. That's why we're likely to have, you know, a real calamity before we can start all over again. But uh, right right now, uh, when you look at that chart we just showed, it shows it's dead, uh, dead set to continue the process, but it is going to end just as quickly as it exploded upward. Uh, you know, those of us, uh, us, our listeners, we're in the minority, those who believe in free markets, liberty, uh, freedom, individual independence. Now, that may sound like a daunting position to be in, but it is not because minorities are the ones who change the world. Just take a look at what happened in Florida uh, and Texas and South Dakota. It did not take a majority of governors in the United States to do the right thing and show the rest of the country and even the world that, hey, this, this is nonsense that's been, go that's been going on. You can be living a normal life right now. There's no need to wait for the bureaucrats and politicians to tell you. So it just shows you, you do not need a majority. Dr. Paul did the same thing in Congress over and over on every unconstitutional bill, 400 to one, 400 to one. That one m meant everything. So in your small circle, in my small circle, no matter how big or small our circle of influence is, it's important to be the one because by doing so, the potential is there to change everything for the better. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.